Hello and yeah. welcome to the Huddersfield Town Preview Show in association with Sports Broker. I'm pleased this afternoon to be joined by Matty Pearson and Ollie Turton. How are you two both doing this afternoon? Uh, no, I'm all, all good, thank you. Yeah, all good, all good. Excellent. It's been a, a, another tough week of uh, training and, and games. Um, so much, so many games in, in such a short amount of time. How are you lads managing that at the minute, Matt? If you, you know, how are you feeling? Because you've you've played the majority of the games, I think, at the minute. Yeah, I feel, I feel like obviously when it when it's going well, you don't feel it as much, do you? Um, <laughs> I think, uh, especially with with a, quite a few days break between the two games now, we've got another big period coming up. But this week, I felt fine. Um, so yeah, just ready for what what's ahead. What about you, Turks? I mean, you're, you you play more often than you don't, but you have to manage your minutes a little bit differently because sometimes you're coming off the bench, um, you're playing different positions. How's it managing your body and your time in the in the team? Uh, well, like I say, recently I've, I've probably played more uh, more games than I ever had. So um, yeah, like it's fair, the the staff and everyone they look after you, so uh, they know what's right for you. So get you ready for each game. So like physically for me, I, I, I feel I feel good. So like you say, just get ready for tomorrow tomorrow night's game now. Yeah, a lot of the lads when we speak to them, they say physically they feel a lot stronger, a lot fitter, a lot slimmer than they ever have done in their careers with the work that we're doing in nutrition and, and physical performance. Is that something you two feel about yourselves as well, Matt? Is that are you feeling better about yourself as sort of an athlete that, here than you have compared to you, um, maybe at other clubs? Yeah, definitely. I think here the stricter on on what you eat, your body weight, um, we get weighed quite quite regular. So there's no margin for obviously slipping a bit overweight, or and it will go down to the fine detail. I think um, especially with the, the club set up, I think. As, as um, meal prep and as as what we should be eating is all set up for us, so there's no excuses really. It's uh, it's, it's a step up for me. I've I've been given like a, a food plan and and what I should be eating, and it, it definitely paid off. I think I've definitely seen improvements in in my uh, in my weight and and obviously just physically. Uh, what you eat is it, it go, goes into your body and it makes you stronger. And I feel like I probably one of the best best shapes I've been in. Does that give you more confidence and, and make you feel a bit better when you are out there playing? But to be honest, before I joined Huddersfield, I, n- I never really took it into consideration as much. Um, maybe coming here and having my meals throughout the week all, all made and it made me realise what what sort of difference it can make and. Even keeping down my body weight down, it's it allows you to be able to run further, obviously run quicker, all all little margins like that, which all all help. What about you, Tate? Is it something that you've noticed a, a difference in yourself in as well? Uh, yeah, I'd, I'd probably say in games um, for me, um, getting told what to eat, how much to eat, like the amount of carbs you have to eat. Like I probably I can say I probably best have felt in in games when it's getting towards the end of the game, you, you find that bit of energy to get you through. Um, so, yeah, no, I can, the, the nutrition's definitely helped, helped me in, in that, that part of it. Um, don't get me wrong, I still, still treat myself and that. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, it's, it's just like another thing to think about to try and, to try and improve as a players. More specifically on your, your form as well at the minute, Ollie, you're playing probably your best football at the moment for town. Is that fair to say? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I, I, to be honest, I think it helps. We play more regularly. Like you get into a into a bit of a role, um, and like I say, I probably is probably the best I've been playing at the minute. Uh, so hopefully it can continue. Yeah, the the fans seem to have really noticed the the you know the last it's challenges you're making flying up and down the right. You carry the ball really nicely. We did a an appreciation to it for you over the weekend as well. Is is that adding to sort of your happiness overall at the club as well? The fact that all of the ducks seem to be caught falling into a bit more of a row for you now. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I say, I think the the most important thing for me is is playing game after the game. I've been used to it all my career, and uh, maybe at the start of the season, maybe a bit of a stop start. Um, but now, like I say, I play more regularly. I think it's it's helped me um, with the performances. So yeah, no, hopefully it can continue. 
Mike, you've been quite lucky. I think you only had one injury early on this year where you, you missed a couple of games, but you've been in the team more often than not throughout this year. And over the past couple of weeks with Lee's head knock and, and Levi dropping in and out of the side, you seem to have been the, the one constant at the back. How's that been for you? Is it is it easy as it goes, sort of plugging in Lee's or Levi or just sort of has it been a bit of a, an adjustment for you depending on who you're playing with? No, it's we all know the script. Um we all know how, how we play. It's it's not a case of I'm playing with him, I've got to play differently. It's uh whoever I'm playing with, I play still play my own game and we, I think Levi and, and Tom Lees and even Nabby in, in the cup, we, we all understand each other and we're all quite com- compatible with each other. It's not a case of, oh, I can't play with him or we're all easy to play with and we, we all know the, what, what the, what's going on when we play. And it, it just, it, I find it easy to, to switch between both of them. It's, it's natural. Yeah, you two are both part of this defensive unit we've got. Matty, you named half of them then. Um, and then obviously the left-backs, uh, Toffolo and, and Russ as well. The fans are, are huge fans of the, the defensive record we've got this year. I think in February it was five clean sheets and seven in, in all competitions. Do you lads get on well off the field? What, what's the secret behind it? Was it the system we're playing? Is it you know how compatible you are together? What's behind this? excellent form that you guys are, are in at the back um, to be honest I think that the whole squad's close so um, obviously that does help um, but then I think it's a, just the determination to, to defend well anyway it's not just the back four it's the it's the goalkeeper it's the it's the lads in front of us as well so it's um, the whole team that puts it puts it together to put a good performance in defensively so um, like you say I think that four and the key for get four, it's but it's the whole team. Um so yeah, that that's that it's it's like say it's it's all that's putting in a shift together. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> I think uh if you look at like Lewis, Hoggy and, and the midfielders, they definitely play a part in that. It's not just a case of us defenders getting it all. I think the whole team do do play a part. And I think if you if you look at like Fulham, Fulham game and and you should have seen the running that the lads in front of us were doing. It wasn't just us, us as a back four or, or a back five when Nabi come on. It were the whole team. And I think we probably got the plaudits for that just because we play defence. But I think, in general, the whole team run the socks up. Does that make your job easier then when you've got the likes of, of Hoggy and, and Lewis doing all that running in front of you and, and sort of putting in the hard yards? Does that mean that when players get to you, your, your job's a bit easier than it might be if they were running through a bit cleaner than they would otherwise. Yeah, I think it does. I think uh, especially even Daniel, I've never seen numbers on the, the stats like him. He runs like 13 kilometres a, a, a game. It, it's I've never seen anything like it. I think just players like that, they all cover the ground, stop the crosses, <clears> always <throat> putting pressure on the ball so it's not an easy pass. And I think it definitely helps us 100%. Yeah, is it does it differ this this system and the work rate that Carlos and, and his staff ask you to do compared to where you've been at other teams? Because you know, you get sent the, the GPS reports and you know we, we hear the whistles and everything out when you're training and the drills you're doing out there. Is it a bit different the intensity and the, and the way you're playing compared to, to how other teams go about their business? Yeah, for me, from whatever I've experienced at the clubs, the uh, I think that's probably the main thing, the intensity in training, uh, what they expect. Um Obviously, in games as well, uh, they obviously have a, a standard that they want. Um, like I say, every, every game's different. There's going to be games where we are going to have to run uh, twice as much, or uh, there's games where maybe we're in a, a low block and we're not having to we're not having to do all them yards. And uh, but yeah, the the, the always is a, a a thing there where we do have to have that intensity all the time to to be able to go and win games. What about yourself, Matty? Is that something that's that's new to your career as well? Um, this this all the running stats I got them before. Style of plays, obviously. I think here's the repetition of what we do is is the most I've noticed. We we go through everything. Um, there's no grey areas. It's basically situations unfold, and we we seem to everyone's programmed. Obviously, it's a bit. But it feels like we're programmed to know how to deal with them situations. It's not um, off the cuff. 
um, definitely in training, it's a lot of repetition and a lot of uh, knowing what's what. And even in in uh, in the meeting rooms, we, we go through certain scenarios and we make it clear on what what needs to be done. And and I think that's what what's helped us a lot this year. Is that how a performance like Birmingham comes around then? Because for me, watching from the stands, that seemed like such a controlled professional performance where from minute one to 90, you knew exactly what you were doing, exactly what you were, you wanted to do and how. Got the two-goal cushion in the first half and then were able just to, to manage the second half without really needing to get into your higher gears. It, does that all come from the work you do on the training pitch and in the meetings? Uh, yeah, definitely. Um I think we recognised early on in the game that they kept a high line. So um, one of our main game plans was probably just to, to get the ball in behind and have runners. Um, and then obviously go, it's good going into the half, 2-0 up. And then it's, I think it's just about game management then. Um, you obviously 2-0 up. Uh, and you obviously want to be, be solid defensively. So I think it was just like the game management uh, in the end, in the second half was really good. So... Um, yeah, that, I'd say that's a, a massive thing for us is the, the game management. Yeah. My, with Peterborough tomorrow night, how do you go about that? Because on paper, people will see them bottom of the table and think it's an easy one for town to just turn up and win. And that's never the case in this division, regardless of who you're playing. We've seen it several times this year already. I think when we, we lost away at Cardiff, they'd not won for a while. When we lost it to Forest at home, that, that was their first win of the season. How do you have to mentally prepare for these occasions where people are going to have you as favourites, but you don't, you know, that's not the case when you actually turn up and start kicking the ball about? Yeah, you just got to rise above all the opinions and that. It's just another game. It don't buy into who's favourites, who's not. It's, you've just got to go out there and play your game. It's it's irrelevant. We'll talk about all that stuff after and, and obviously the build-up to it. But once the... the the, the ball's obviously kick off. It's it's a game of football, and anyone can win. We know that. Um, I've been there. I know what it's like to be bottom of the league. Um, two years ago with Luton, I, I know exactly how how they feel. I know they're fighting for their lives, and I know that Peterborough will, will give everything they've got. And it's not not one for us to take lightly. I, I know exactly what's coming. It, we we know we know all of us know that it's, it's going to be a, a tough game. Yeah, Ollie, is, is it one where you've got to concentrate more on your own game and keeping your own standards high? Because you've got such a quick turnaround from, from Friday and then Monday away at the city ground against Nottingham. You've got to kind of you know manage this game and, and, and play as well as you can to carry that into Monday, don't you? Yeah, like, like Matty said, it's, it's, it's going to be a, a really tough game um, and we have to approach it the right way. Um, and regarding that, I think... I think the lads are more focused on on tomorrow's game. I think the massive part of what the, the manager wants is to do it game by game and and don't listen to any of the noise or anything like that. Um, so it's uh, for us, it's just another game that we've got to uh, be 100 percent for. Yeah, some of the noise, obviously, out externally and and what have you, is is understandable to to block out. But but some of the stuff that I think you you must be embracing is is how close you guys are to the fans now. And that's something that obviously the, the club have, have not had for a couple of years while times haven't been as good. But this season, especially, you know, the wave coming back, the, the closeness with the fans, the, the nicknames, the socials and, and everything that, that seems to be such a, a great environment to play in. Matty, is that something that, that helps you guys when you know that the supporters are behind you, when you know that they're you know desperate to celebrate with you at the end of the game? Is that nice for you? Does that give you a bit of a lift when you, you know, you're going out there and and running your blood to water and editing ed everything that comes your way again. Yeah, I think all the lads here have been been class for obviously us us as new lads this year. I think we've gelled really well, and I think hundred percent it makes makes uh, life easier on the pitch. I think if we we weren't speaking and we're not getting on, I don't think we'd be in that position that we are now. Um, every successful team has a has a um, has obviously. Good things going on off the pitch, and I think we're in a good moment at the minute. We just need to keep it going and and keep uh, the togetherness and and have this final push, obviously, till till the end of the season. Is that what about you, Turks? Is that, is that relationship with the fans something that's sort of a a bit of a bonus for you then, given how good things are at Canal Side and with the lads? The fact that everyone, you know, from the fan side of it's buying into it as well. Is that a good thing for you? Yeah, definitely. Like I say, the relationship's brilliant at the moment. Um, 
went obviously we obviously when we played Fulham the other day the the fans were brilliant there and it's uh, obviously it helps on the pitch as well when you've got your fans all behind you so um, yeah no it's it's definitely a positive for us and it, it helps us in the games as well do, do you guys sort of you know the, the social side of it is something we obviously see more I don't know how much you guys keep track of it but to, there's there's been a few sort of um, ginger cafus flying about on Twitter for you. Is that is that something that you know brings a smile to your face and something you enjoy seeing as well? The fact that they're getting behind you in that way. Yeah, no, I, I, I first heard it um, in the Birmingham game. Mike said it was the day actually, so we're chuckling, to, chuckling to ourselves. <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, it's it's nice to to um, to hear that. Um, obviously, it gives you a massive boost. So yeah, no, brilliant. And obviously, Matty, you've got keys to Cannavaro as well, and I know your mates have been, you know texting you about that and stuff is it is it something that's nice for you to hear that sort of thing yeah it is um obviously being from west Yorkshire, i now passionate some of the, some of the people are about football and it is it, obviously it's it's great obviously to get nicknames and get obviously your, your name sung but we, we just just one of them it's obviously enjoyed I enjoy the good moments, but we just need to keep going. I, I'm just focused on the end of the season and just want to make it a fantastic end of the season and hopefully we can do. Yeah, that, that focus seems to be something that's, that's shared amongst you boys every time you, you're in here and, and sort of speaking to us. There seems to be a real determination between you all. Is that something that was there from day one when you all met up? Because obviously you boys are both new to the club. This is your first season here. And I think one of the biggest compliments I could pay is that you both feel like you've been here for years. The squad feel like it. They've been playing for years together, but you haven't. You, you, you know, you're all sort of fairly new to the club and everything. Is that something you guys have experienced as well? Does it, does it feel like you've been at the club and playing with each other longer than you actually have been? Yeah, I, to be honest, I think it's like each individual. I think each individual's come in and and we all work our socks off and we all want that that end goal of being successful. So I think if you've got a, a good change rooms, obviously you are you are halfway there. And, um, like I say, you have to put performances in, and you have to get it right, get it right on the pitch, and that. But being all together um, and getting on well, and uh, having that togetherness is obviously key as well. Yeah, one of the, the the changes to the dressing room this week has been that John Russell's moved up, and that's something when we were, you know, speaking to you guys about it, finding out about why that change has happened, is because. The squad had asked for it, and you know he felt part of the first team. Now you guys wanted him around that environment more. Matty, could you just talk us through, you know, when the lads are in that sort of a, have that sort of ability to, to say, you know, he's part of our group. That's quite special, isn't it? That, you know, they've asked specifically for John to, to come and be part of that environment. Yeah, I think, uh, I think John deserves it. I think to come and to play like that, obviously with his first game, I think it was his first start against Sheffield United and then to, uh, to to back it up with the performances he has, I think it it, it deserves a uh, deserves to to be moved up. Um, like you, you get some people who will probably buckle under the pressure, but he's definitely took it on his chest and he's he's definitely performed and he's definitely one of one of the lads now. It's not a case of a young lad. He's he's building himself up to be a first team player, which he's shown. Yeah, another lad that sort of. You know, people forget how young he is. Is it's Levi? You know, he's only just turned nineteen years old, which is ridiculous when you see size of him and how good he is, and and you know how he's taken to the to the league. In terms, when you you see a player of that age who's been eighteen for the majority of the season playing as well as he has, that just it kind of shows just how much class he possesses, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. I I always think about what I was probably doing at eighteen, and it's <laughs> it's nothing on what he's doing at the minute. Um, but. Like I say, he's a, a top class player and um, he's, he's, he's getting all the recognition he deserves. So long will may it continue for him. Yeah, and on the other end of the, the scale, um, somebody who's who's at the other end of the career and, and had so much experience is Tom Lees. And that's somebody I wanted to ask you about, Matty. Is it good for you? And are you learning or playing alongside somebody who's who's had such a great career, who is so consistent and you know he's so committed to what he does? Because you know, size of that gash on his head, the fact that he finished that game, he seems to out of the two of you, he seems to cop more in, in the game than you manage. So I think people might just stay away from you given size of you and he gets it on chin blessing. But is it is it good for you and, and sort of your development still to to play with somebody like that who knows the game so well? Yeah, it's it's not a fluke. Obviously, he's played 
what championship football for 10 years or whatever and it, it doesn't just happen that you've got to be good and like you say consistent and to be at that level for so long it just shows how good he is um he's definitely helped me in how, how i played helped levi definitely one of the the ones we, we look up to a senior member because you, you get respect once you've done it for 10 years and i think uh he's definitely a good role model for any any centre backs, young young centre backs, I think he's perfect for Levi to learn off. Um, he's definitely helped us. Yeah, is is there anyone else in the squad at all that sort of sticks out as as old in the standards? Because the one that usually comes up is is Hoggy, is the captain. He seems to be the one that leads by example and and makes sure that lads are you know keeping their socks pulled up and, and aren't slacking at all. Is that still the case? Is, is Hoggy yeah, the standard definitely. bearer? Definitely, he's <laughs> always. Uh, He's always shouting at someone in training for not not doing whatever, and yeah, he's always there. And you just know if if you misplace a pass, is is definitely two seconds behind you, about to say something to you. Yeah, is that is that good for you though to know that there's somebody there just keeping your levels high and on your toes, and and good for the squad just to have a leader who who wants you to wants the best for you and wants the best for the team. Yeah, that, it just keeps the standards up, doesn't it? Um, I think one one thing this season is that we've kept our standards very high, and you need need leaders like that to to be able to enforce that and and do it the right way. And and like I say, someone like Hoggy who's been at this club for a long time, a, a, a brilliant career. Like you say, it's it like Mike was saying about Leeds, it's that respect that they've got. Um, and and like you say, you 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 listen to them, um, and they're doing it for the right reasons and uh, to improve us as the team. Yeah, another lad like you two who's come in this year and, and you know, another one who's setting standards and doing really well is, is behind you, is Lee Nichols. Um, what's he like to play with? Because the fans have obviously taken to him, you know, his, his record this year and, and what he's doing between the sticks speaks for itself. But is he as sort of loud and, and sort of influential on the pitch and in training as he, as he seems to be when we watch him from stands? Uh, yeah, definitely. Like I say, I'd say, I'd say Lee's just a, a real calm presence for us, and and when he's called upon, he's um, he's always there for us. Um, he's obviously he's, he must have he must have got us a, a load of points this season from saves he's made. And like I said, I say the main thing for me is he is a calm and presence there for us. And um, yeah, no, I think it helps the team massively. Yeah, yeah, Matty, you made a real point of of including him when I mentioned the defence. You went out of your way to say, "Oh, Lee's involved in this as well." Is is that something that gives you confidence knowing he's behind you if anyone does get past? Yeah, it's just, it's so chilled out. I've never seen a keeper so chilled out. They're normally like an hot potato when it comes to the feet. Or <laughs> it's, um, yeah, it's just it's just great to have someone with you who's not going to panic. Even if something does go slightly wrong, it, it, it don't panic. It's it's quite, he's quite in control of what he's doing. And it, it definitely helps us as centre-backs, especially the way we play out. I think to have someone who you know you can pass the ball to who's going to control it, play it or get you know make something happen from a goalkeeper is so it, it's quite quite helpful even uh, goalkeepers in the Premier League can't control it and, and dictate the player like he does I think he's definitely in control of what he's doing yeah that's, that's always good to hear and I think the fact that there's so many positives we're you know, 17 games unbeaten in, in all competitions now going back to November last year that's an incredible record and something that you guys ought to be you know incredibly proud of as my last question to, to both of you, then, with us being third in league at present, uh, with the you know the cup fifth round on, on on Monday, how does the rest of the season look for you guys? Are you, are you doing as Carlos says and just taking it a game at a time, or is there a bit of you now where you're looking at the possibilities and going, this is you know something special can be achieved here if we we carry on in the way we are? Yeah, I think that's the only way we can take it is game by game. Um, obviously, if if we do that and. And keep on picking the points up that we need. Um, like I say, we'll we'll be there in the end. But like I say, we've got to win them games. So I think it's important for us not to get to um, get too forward in the future and and just concentrate on now and what we can do now is play game by game and keep on picking point, points up. What about yourself, Matty? Uh, we all know how, how tight it is. There's about <clears throat> eight teams or something that. That are all in with a shout. We we know if we're not on it, that we're going to get overtaken or someone's going to catch us. And that that's my mentality. I think we just need to be on it every game. Make sure we don't give them a chance. If they win, we win. Keep keep obviously 
everyone putting pressure on everyone, making sure that they have to win their games. We don't want to be giving other teams the opportunity to overtake us. So I look at the league table, people say we don't, I look at it. And I know we need to put pressure on other teams, like they'll be trying to put pressure on us. So we just need to, in a way, take it game by game, but we know we need to be on it to obviously keep keep the distance from, from dropping out of the playoffs. Well, it's great to hear that, lads, and um, I'll let you two go now. Thank you very much for, for giving us your time. Good luck for, for tomorrow night and the rest of the season, and, and we'll speak to you soon. And, and thanks to, to, to Sportsbroker for sponsoring the show. Cheers. Cheers.